Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well, we got a great one for you today. This was actually requested by somebody a couple of videos ago. We created a button. When you clicked on the button, it shot down a little section. When you clicked on it again, section disappeared. And somebody asked if we could do that, but instead of have it appear as a section below, they wanted to pop it up to a light box. We've done this before in the past. But it's such a great feature, I thought I'd cover it again. Really easy to do. As I mentioned, fantastic feature. So let me take you through it. Okay, here we have our original site. This is what we did the other day. We built this little button here that when you click on it, pops out a little contact form and it pushes down the section below there. Click on it again, it makes it disappear. As I mentioned earlier, we had a question. Somebody says, well, can you get it to pop out into a light box instead of just pushing that section down there? Yeah, and it's really easy to do. We've done this several times before, but I'm happy to go over it again. With this, I actually put, wrote the code myself and supplied it to you so you could do it. For, to make it pop out into a light box section, Elegant Themes actually has some code here, and I'll put this URL down below the video so that you can copy and paste this and it's really easy to do and it's a great little thing to have on your site you can use it for so many different applications so let's enable the visual builder and if i go to the back end here we hid that little contact form last time so here it is right here i'm going to go into it And unhide it. We hit it using a bit of CSS in the module elements, display none. I just get rid of that and save it. Go back to the front end. As you can see, it's appeared there and we were toggling it on and off with our little button there. So this is the contact form we want to pop up and you can use any section that you want to do this. You really can. In fact, let's just add a couple of things make this section a bit bigger and I'll show you how you can make it scroll when you pop it up. So let's just add another row. Add three little columns in there and let's just chuck a couple of call to actions in there. Not too keen on that background color. I'm just going to change that to blue and I'll leave it like that and I'll clone it a couple of times. Two little squares to clone it just like that. And I'm dragging one across, doesn't matter which one, they're all the same thing as we clone them. Just to give it a bit more depth, and I'll show you how to make this scroll. So now that we've given it a bit more height, we can go into it, and let's give it a fixed height. I'm going to go into Design, Sizing. And let's just call it 100 viewable height, which will be 100% of the viewable height on any device. So down in Height, under Design here, and Sizing, I'm going to type in 100 VH, viewable height. That's given it a fixed height. Now I can go over to my advanced settings, down to visibility, and add a vertical scroll to it. Vertical overflow. Just select scroll. And we've got a little scroll bar over here just for this section. So now we've done that, let's save this. And the reason I did that is because on tablet and mobile, if you don't do that, you're not going to be able to scroll down if it's bigger than the screen size there. Now we've done that, we can forget about this section for a moment. And let's just make this row into two. And I'm going to add a new button for this one. Green tab for the row. I'm going to hit on the little column structure icon there in the middle. I'm going to make it into two. I'm going to add a new button over here. Let's just call it contact. Us, I guess. Whatever you want to call yours. And I'll use the same styling as this button here. And the easiest way of doing that is to right click on this button. Copy module styles. Right click on this button. Paste module styles, and we got the same styling going on there. Fantastic. Great. Well, we've got the button. 
and we've got the bit that we actually want to pop up here, which is this section right here. Let's go over to the Elegant Themes site and do some coding. Okay, well, we've got to do a little bit of coding now, and don't worry, it's just a simple matter of copy and paste. We've got a little bit of CSS code, and we've got a little bit of JavaScript. All we've got to do is copy them from the page, paste them into our Divi theme, custom CSS box for the CSS, and the integrations tab for the JavaScript. Really easy to do. Once we've done that, we can assign CSS class names to the button that we want to click to pop up something, and the something that we want to click, which is our section with the contact fold and a couple of call to actions in there. And as you'll see, this is really easy to do. At the end, I'll show you a couple of tweaks you might need to make to make sure that you can shut it down once it's open with the little X that's up there. So let's get back to the build. Okay, once we're over at this site here, if we roll down, and I would suggest you read this page, it's got some great tips on it, but I'm gonna go through it quite quickly. If we roll down about halfway of this page here, we'll find some CSS code right here. Starts off with body and ends with a closing curly bracket right there. You want to select all of that, make sure you get all of it. Copy it, control C. We'll go back to our site. What we need to do, go down to the dashboard, or you could actually put this in a code module on this page, but I'll go down to the dashboard. Down to Divi and theme options. Under the general tab, this is where we were working the other day. You've got a custom CSS box here. You need to paste that in there. So you've got it all in there. Control V to paste. Once you've got it in there, make sure you hit your save changes till you get your little green check mark. There it is. Fantastic. Now, if we go back to this site, roll down just a little bit more from the CSS there, we've got a bit of JavaScript. I'm going to copy it from the opening script tag here to the closing script tag there. Again, control C. And again, we're going to go back to where we were in the options there. If we roll back up to the top of the page, we need to roll over to integration. And we're going to add this code to the head of the blog here. So again, I'm going to put my cursor in there, control V to paste. We've got that script in there. If you've already got something in there, just scoot it down paste this on top or you can just go down below and paste this below I didn't have anything in there again you want to make sure you save your changes till you get your check mark great now we're pretty much all set for this now if we look at this code over here down the bottom it tells us that we need to use class names of ETLB content and ETLB button for these. In fact, if I roll up a bit, it's got it just up here. Now we're going to start off with ETLB button one. The reason it's got a number at the end there is you can have several of these on one page. And if you've got different things popping up with different buttons, you increment the button up to two and increment the other class name up to two as well, and the corresponding numbers will pop up the corresponding bits. And it explains that down at the bottom here. So like I say, it's a good idea to have a read. So we need to give our button the class of ETLB button one. I'm gonna copy that. We'll go back to our page here, into the button that we wanna use as the pop-up. Over to advanced, it's always where you find CSS IDs and classes. I'm going to take that ID away. That's the ID that we used to make it check that contact form down just now. I'm going to give this the class name. Make sure you put it in class and not ID. ETLB button one. Great. Now, if we look back here, the actual content that we want to pop up has to have ETLB content one corresponding with it, as I said just now. So I'm going to copy that, control C. Going to go back to our page again and go into the section that we want to pop up this time. Again, over to advanced, CSS ID in classes. Once there, I'm going to give it that class name and we'll save our changes. I'm going to go down, I'm going to save draft. 
I'm now going to exit the Visual Builder. And the first thing you may notice is that contact form and those little call to actions are gone. Now, I know before we had them hidden, but I took that away. So it's actually our new code that's hiding those now. And we've got our little contact us button here. If I click on it, there it is. It's popped up our little contact form there. And we can scroll up and down. No need to on this page because it's big enough for the page. But if I hit my F12 key, I'm using the Chrome Inspector tools here. If I put my responsive devices toggle on, let's put it on the iPad, perhaps. There's our contact us button. If I click on it, pops up that form. And as you can see, we can scroll down. That would probably be better if I demoed it on an iPhone. There's an iPhone 12 there. Let's make it just a little bit bigger. Roll down. There's our contact us button. There it is popping up on the phone. And because we made it fixed height, we can scroll up and down and get everything on there. If you hadn't put that overflow set to scroll, you wouldn't be able to scroll like this. And once we're done with it, we can click the X to get rid of it. Now there's a couple things you might want to know about this. If I just click on that again, we've got a white X up there. If you're using a white background, you're not going to see that. So you might want to change the color of it. You can do that really easily. If we go back to our theme options here, go back to the general tab, down to the CSS that we put in. If we roll down a little ways, mine's on line 23. It says color of closing icon. You can change that to any color you want. For instance, if I put in, well, let's just put in red. Save my changes now. We'll go back, get rid of that one. We'll refresh the page and hit that button. We've now got a red X up there and that comes up all the time. When I do these, a lot of people say, well, I can't find the X. Mine's got no X. You'll probably find that it is there, but it's by default going to be white. So if you're using a white background to cop, pop up your content, you're not going to see it. So there you have it. We've turned our little information drop down into a light box with this other button here using that bit of code for elegant themes. And like I said, I'll put that URL down below so you can copy and paste the code from there. And this is a really useful feature to have on your site. So there we have it. And of course, they can go and fill out the form, do what they need to do. Perfect. So there we have it. There's how to pop up a little contact form from a button. Really easy as you can see and a fantastic thing to have on your site. Really useful for all kind of applications. If you've enjoyed this today, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's always great to hear from you as I've mentioned in other videos. Your comments down below help me to come up with new ideas to make videos hopefully that will help you out in the future. If you've enjoyed this today, have a look over here. In a moment, there should be a little playlist pop up, Divi Button Effects. You'll find some great other content there. We've done this sort of thing with pop up galleries and things like that in the past. As you can see, really easy to do. So, once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.